Ladies and gents, welcome back. Today is tune-up day for the 91 Vert. You can see I got my coupe parked outside. That's because I had my engine stand in here last night and I had to roll it out this morning. And I'm actually gonna get out in the car today. So uh, yeah, that should be good. Anyway, um, I had a bunch of you guys reach out to me and say that you'd be interested in seeing a tune-up video. So I thought I'd go through the stuff with you here. Um, I got my box of parts down here. Plugs, wires, cap, rotor, um, fuel filter, all that good stuff. And um, I'm actually, so I mentioned in my last video, but I've got a little box of goodies here that I've been packing around with me for quite some time. Uh, what I got here is, well, my stock mass air. And I've also got, here, all of my stock air box. Um, this one's a little beat up. The uh, gasket that meets the fender is a little toasted. So I thought I'd uh, throw this stuff in there while I'm at it. Cause you kind of got to remove a lot of that stuff to get at the plugs and wires anyway. Anyway, um, so I'm going to be throwing that stuff in the car while we're at this. Um, got my new, couldn't wait. Got my new 5.0, well, brand new second hand. 50 uh, HO plenum badge on there. And what else have I been up to? Um, silly, but this was my, uh, or is my um, fuse block holder. It was, it had been kicked or something at one point. So tack welded that back together and straightened it out. And uh, yeah, so anyway guys, stand by. I'll uh, get you under here. I've still got my hood pinned up from lifting the motor last night. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, real hillbilly mechanics. But anyway, it works. Gets you a little more light under the hood and uh, gets the hood out of the way. Um, but yeah, stand by. I'll get you underneath the hood here with me and uh, we'll start the tune up. All right, guys, going to speed the video up here so I don't bore you to death completely. But what I'm doing here is just removing the dust cover boot from the distributor. Probably most of your cars out there already have that thrown away or in a garbage can somewhere. And then I've released the clips off of both side of the distributor cap. Now you can see me reaching in the motor here. All I'm doing is pulling the plug wires off of the plugs. Not really pulling them off in any particular order, but they can be a little tight and sticky, so uh, watch your knuckles. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm messing around with the, these are the original Ford plug separators, organizers, whatever you want to call them. You can see there's one ever so thin black plastic one in behind the air conditioning compressor. And there's one that I'm messing around with right now. It comes off one of the valve cover bolts um, and slides over a, a, a taller threaded portion of one of the, the valve cover bolts. So I'm just, I want to reuse these. So I'm trying ever so delicately to loosen these off without breaking them because they're 30 years old and very brittle so that's what i'm messing around with here um trying to be really really delicate with it all right guys so on to the other side of the motor here now i'm just loosening off what i hadn't loosened off the night before which includes this air box hose that goes to the mass air sensor um, I've already loosened off the mass air sensor. There's three bolts that come up into the bottom of it from a bracket. You just pop those off. You take your connector off and your mass air pops out. So here's my cover for my air box. And nice look at a top quality Fram air filter. All right, now what you can see me doing here, I'm just gonna remove my lower half of my air box that meets the fender here. Uh, it's kind of a foam gasket that seals it between the fender and the air box. Now these bolts gave me a little bit of grief. Um, I don't know that this air box had ever been removed from this car, so I'm gonna give them another good loosening here and see if I can't get them out. There it is. And so now from this aspect ratio, you get a heck of a lot better look at that side of the engine bank. Well, I'm just putting my 
the three bolts that I referenced earlier that hold your mass air sensor onto the bracket. I'm just placing those back in the bracket there. Oh, and I'm gonna bust out the shop vac here. Um, found some dirt in the wheel well, so I'm gonna, or in the inner fender there, so I'm just gonna tidy up that quick and then I'll get after pulling the plug wires off of this side of the engine. All right, so now I'm gonna get after finally pulling the plugs out of this motor. Um, take yourself a spark plug socket. Um, I can't really explain to you any more what those look like, but essentially they've got a, a bit of a rubber boot inside of them that holds the spark plug nice and secure. Have yourself a couple of different extensions and possibly even a swivel because especially the, the side of the motor that I'm on the passenger side right now, it gets a little tight in there if you're working around any of the stock uh, air pump plumbing. So yeah, and uh, right to tight, left to loose, back those out and uh, get them on the bench. Okay, plugs are out and they don't look too bad, to be honest, for being original. I can't get over the fact that these are the original plugs that came in this car. But anyway, there they all are, pretty clean. So that's a good sign. Um, now, what I want to show you is setting up the new plugs. Now, I had some people ask me questions on what plugs I run. I truthfully don't worry too much about uh, the plugs that I run in my cars. And the reason being is I'm not running nitrous. I'm not running boost. I'm not, I'm, I'm naturally aspirated and I'm, I'm a, more or less a very very tame setup so um, just a good quality clean spark plug is key but anyway um, so this is a spark plug gapper and how you use these it's measured measured in thousands um, what Ford recommends these plugs to be set at is anywhere from 52 thou to 56 thou so start low work your way up and actually this plug, I think you can see that it's at the top end of what Ford recommends. But just to give you an idea, I'll just grab another random one here. We're almost closer to 60 thou there. So you got to set the gaps on your plugs. Um, if you don't, yeah, you run the risk of your car running a little rough. Um, there is some science behind all this, so uh, just get yourself a spark plug gap checker and uh, measure your plugs properly. So anyway, I'm going to get these gapped up and we'll get them back in the car and then I'll show you running the wires. All right, so here's gap and the plugs in action. I'm just checking the gap on this plug. And it ends up being the gaps too large. So I'm just going to close that gap in with the uh, flat section on the top of my vise. Any hard material that you can push on is is going to suffice here and then just recheck it again and if you got your gap right well move on to the next plug again gaps too big going to push down on that plug and close the gap in a bit now here i actually closed the gap too much so you can see that hole inside of the the plug gap tool you can use it to open up the gap in the plug i obviously overdid it so here i am checking it again got it on that try so it's a little bit of finesse you got to go back and forth sometimes you close it too much sometimes you you open it up too much but at the end of the day you just want to make sure that you've got your plug gap within Ford's recommended specifications. All right, guys, here I am just running uh, the new plugs into the, the heads. Um, make sure you're not forcing those threads in there. The last thing you wanna do is gall up the threads in your heads and or on your plugs. So take your time in this step. Um, technically, you should be putting some anti-seize on these, on the threads of these plugs. Um, I don't run my 
cars in wet, cold. I, I mean, they, they just run in the summer months, so I'm not too worried about these plugs getting stuck in there. Plus, I'm sure if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that this engine's coming out this fall anyway, so I'm a couple months away from this whole engine coming out. I'm not too worried about these plugs being seized in there. Now, there is a torque specification that you should be tightening these plugs to. Um, full disclosure, I did not torque these plugs. I've put enough plugs in engines, I, I pretty much can dial in the torque pretty good within a, a, I don't know, say five or so foot pounds, but um, you just don't farmer tight them, okay? I think everybody knows what farmer tight is, like one step before the threads pull off of the plug. Don't go to that extent, but don't have them too loose either, okay? Just use your discretion and uh, put your ratchet on there. If you got a torque wrench that you can get in there, mine's way too big to this side wouldn't of the engine wouldn't be too bad to get it in there but the other side's way too tight there's no way i could get it in there so i just tighten them up uh, get them hand tight like this and then i'll put a ratchet on the end of my uh, extension and just ever so slightly get them tight it's kind of like doing a doing an oil filter if you've done an oil change on your on your car you're not supposed to get a wrench on there and an oil filter wrench and over tighten them just get them nice and tight all right so new plugs are in now i'm going to pull the cap and plug wires off of the distributor now i pull all of the plug wires and cap off while the plug wires are still intact to the cap so i've got a little bit of a template for when i go to rig up my new cap and wires Essentially what I do is I use the old cap and wires as a uh, schematic for how the new cap and wires are going to go. You can see here some plug wires are a little bit longer than others and need to go to the back end of the, the head. This way you can have a side-by-side -side comparison of what your new cap is going to look like. So you can set it all up on the floor beside you. Um, in a similar format to the way that your old cap and wires were ran. Okay, don't mind the CSA approved safety boots here, guys. <laughs> it was a hot day when I was doing this. So here I've got my new cap beside my old cap, and essentially I'm just gonna take my new wires and I'm going to place them on my new cap in a similar fashion to the way that my old cap and wires are ran. You gotta find the right length wire and put it on the right uh, number cylinder so that you've got the right amount of length to, to reach back to your to your plug. So all I'm doing here is, I mean, it's like the old kids game, right? Which one of these numbers or letters lines up with the other one? So here you can see I found one that seems to be approximately the same amount of length that I had on the old cap I'm going to use that wire and just go through um, one through eight cylinders and then I should mention the center of your cap uh, in case you didn't know already that's for your coil wire that's over on the driver's side fender mounted on the driver's side fender uh, stock it's under a plastic cover but um, a lot of those covers get torn off and never put back on cars. So anyway, your center post on that cap is for your coil wire. And you'll see, actually the, the wire I'm picking up right now, that's a coil wire. So um, don't use that, don't mistake it for one of your um, plug wires. You can see it's different than the other ones. All right, so just back to the engine here. Now I'm removing the old rotor, setting it aside and putting my new rotor on. This is uh, dead simple, okay? I, I mean, it's simply just pull it up and remove it and drop the new one on in the exact same 
place that the old one came off. Now I'm going to grab my new cap and wires that I previously set up on the shop floor and I'm going to place it on the distributor. So now just line it up, it'll essentially fall into place so that you can lock these two clips back and uh, back onto the cap and from there it's just a matter of draping your wires into place and putting them in such a format so that they're not going to get burned or rub on anything that moves or you should also keep in mind that you know the engine moves around a lot and you're going to have a lot of breeze running through the engine compartment so you really should have your plug wires away from anything that they can touch as best as you possibly can but i would say as far as priorities are concerned make sure that your wires are not going to get hit by any moving parts and equally as important do not have them resting on hot exhaust headers, manifolds, whatever. Make sure that they are very safely and securely placed away from those hot heat sources. If they are, I mean, there's engines that are out there that you have no choice but to run them by something warm. Oh, don't mind my eldest here in the background. She comes down in her pajamas as I'm working. Um, yeah, you can get um, like a, a heat resistant cover for your spark plug wire and or spark plug boot um, to keep it from burning. So if you're, you're absolutely out of options for tying it away from uh, hot parts, you can always cover them with specific fire resistant uh, cloth. All right guys, so wires are all connected and organized. Now the last piece of this puzzle is coil wire. So pop the little cover off. I got the wrong one here. This kit came with two. fuel filter portion of the tune-up. So I'm underneath the back of the car. This is the fuel tank. So right in front of it, you can see this hump here. This is the spare tire holder. So here's your fuel filter and my apologies guys, this has already actually been changed. So I'm not gonna show you exactly, like I'm not gonna show you me pulling it out, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So essentially you pull these tabs up Okay, get yourself a flat blade screwdriver. Be careful, depending on how old your tabs are, they're gonna be brittle. If you break them, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting them out. They do sell replacement tabs. Um, and essentially you pull these out and you pull the line off. Now, be ever so careful because there is gonna be fuel in these lines and your fuel filter is gonna have fuel in it. So as you're laying under it with your face facing it, you're gonna probably get a face full of fuel. So have yourself a bit of a catch can or a pile of paper towel, whatever. But anyway, pull those tabs up on both sides, pull those lines off, unscrew your hose clamp and your fuel filter pops out. Drop your new one in. Be careful too, on your fuel filter, it'll have a flow. It'll say flow and it'll have an arrow pointing 
obviously put it in the way that fuel flows out of your tank and up to the front of the car to the motor but that's your fuel filter in a nutshell okay guys so there it is um rubber boot back on the distributor cap you know what's kind of funny is i like ripped that off of my green coupe real fast after i got it i'm like this thing is so stupid why do i want this i want to look at like cool distributor cap and plug wires and <laughs> now here i am like ever so delicately trying to put it back on so i don't wreck it it's funny how times change um yeah so we got to put the air box uh my uh well my the air box that came out of my coupe that's what's going to go in there my uh mass airflow all that stuff but that's kind of boring to watch um and then yeah i was going to mention to you here guys too i highly doubt any of you are dealing with 30 year old plug wires but um where was this guy i did have one that was ripped not that one there you go that's not good not good at all cylinder number two um now whether or not that was kind of grounding out arcing out whatever i do not know but uh yeah you want to keep an eye on that sort of stuff i mean if you're regularly servicing your stuff you won't have to worry about any of that but uh if you got something that's old and maybe misfiring or whatever that's a pretty good place for that to happen so but the only thing i didn't do that i want to and will but um i'd like to take that throttle body off and clean it really good it's filthy but i don't have a gasket the gasket that goes from the plenum to the throttle body but that would be another thing that i would throw in this uh this whole tune up obviously you got fluids change of rad fluid um, that's pretty self-explanatory if you got the stock rad open the little pet cock and drain her out put new fluid in depending on how serious you want to go you can flush them and drain the block and stuff too but brake fluid obviously your oil quick little oil change but yeah that's uh tune up in a nutshell for me anyway thanks again guys um and i will catch you on the next one take care bye for now